coming up, an interview with a classic singer-songwriter who really gave the world a gift when he recorded this next song. It came out during one of the most turbulent times in our history, and it brought peace to so many, and it still resonates today. Today's artist dropped out of a prestigious university to follow his musical dream. He heard the song and he knew he was meant to sing it, even though he was an unknown at the time. And uh, there were other big names that wanted to record it. In fact, five major artists recorded this song, but it was his version that became an all-time classic. However, it would be a long journey to the top of the charts. When it was first released, it actually stalled at number 62. But a lucky break gave him a second chance when he got it re-released two years after it failed. Find out how that happened and the story from him next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. We interview the, the great artists of the rock and roll era, and you never know from day to day who we're going to interview. So make sure to subscribe right now below. Click the bell so you don't miss out. And also, don't forget to check out our exclusive content. That's on Patreon. Also, make sure to check out our merch. That's below or professorofrock.com. Uh, you can check out the Vintage Years collection, Three Chords and the Truth. Celebrate great music through wearing it. So it's time for another episode of our series, Bottle Light. This is where we break down the history of a beloved one-hit wonder that has resonated within our culture. You know, where we still sing the song decades later. We haven't done one of these in a while. We're talking today about the top five hit from 1969, Get Together by the Youngbloods. Come on, keep them out. Smile on your blood. It was truly a one-hit wonder, because it's a wonder and a tragedy that the Youngbloods didn't have more hits. I mean, they had some great songs, including the breathtaking Darkness, Darkness. That one's been used in so many films and TV shows. Darkness, Darkness. Get Together has a fascinating history, which we'll cover in the interview with lead singer Jesse Colin Young. This is actually one of my favorite songs from the 60s. And I'll tell you, it was such an honor to interview the man who interpreted it so beautifully. This is a special one for me, and I hope it will be for you too. As we go into this episode of Bottle of Lightning, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. Since Zenny has uh, been our sponsor, I've received so many comments and feedback from our viewers who have loved their glasses and especially the features like anti-fog, anti-glare, and blue blocks. I'm telling you, Zenny, these guys are the real deal. Go to zenny.com right now to get on board. Let's talk about one of the most spiritual pop songs in music history. To me, it's a song that stands side by side with the other spiritual songs of that time, God Only Knows by the Beach Boys. Mm. God only knows what I'd be without you. Turn, turn, turn by the birds. There is a season, turn, turn, turn. And of course, Get Together by the Youngbloods. Right and I know, of course, it was written by Chet Powers, which one is Dino Valenti from the Quicksilver Messenger Service. And I read that he had written that song in the summer of 1963. Mm -hmm. He wrote it at Edie Sedgwick's house and he just wanted to write a message song. I had never heard anybody play it, but we came to the village, uh, Youngbloods, and of course I'd been living there on the Lower East Side, but we didn't come till 65 and Dino was gone. But Dino was l like a legendary folk singer in the village. And he left that song. I think he left it there for me to find. We were playing at the Cafe of Gogo. Uh, I think it was 20 bucks a night, and we would open for... I mean, I got to open for Muddy Waters, man. I mean, Wow. You, I, could, I, could, I should have paid them. <laughs> so um, it was a Sunday afternoon, and I was hoping the Gogo was dark, because then I could call the guys and we could rehearse. So I went down the stairs, this long staircase, which no longer exists. It's gone. I was just in the village a couple of months ago. Wow. And, uh, oh, there was an open mic. So I almost turned around and walked up. 
I said, I don't want to hear these folk singers. But I didn't. No, I just, I stuck my head in. And there was Buzzy Lenhart on stage. He had a trio, bass and drums, and him playing guitar upside down or something. He's a lefty playing Get Together. And that song just went right through me. And I ran backstage, and I said, oh, man, please, you got to write the lyrics out for me. Because I want to I wanna play it in the Young Buds. That was a big day. It felt like it was meant to be. Very much so. I think I sensed that Get Together would, and I would be together for until I leave the planet. And You were supposed to be its messenger <laughs> for sure because it was done by so many people. I mean, if you think about all the people, the Kingston Trio, of course, recorded. It wasn't released as a single, but they did it kind of the way they did most of their songs, pretty straight. Hey, let's get together, try and love one another right now. A young David Crosby yeah. did it, pre-Birds. He recorded it along with three other demos, and he put a little twist and shout in it because the Beatles version of Twist and Shout had just come out. Mm -hmm. So he put a little bit of that riff in there and Tommy Tedesco played electric guitar on it. And then of course, We Five had a hit with it. It went to number 32. Right and then Jefferson Airplane. People now smile on you, brother. Let me see you get together. The thing about all of those versions, though, if you stack yours against those, they all kind of sang it straight. It was kind of in a box. Come on, people now. Smile on your brother. This was angelic work, just angels pushing me in the right direction. I went into rehearsal with it, and my manager heard me uh, rehearsing it, or maybe we'd started playing it, because, I mean, I was crazy about it. And um, he said, why are you singing that song? That's kind of a funny song for you. You know, you're kind of an angry young man. That, you're singing Fred Neal's, that's another side of this life. And there's another side to this life. I just said, this is it. This is it for me. This is the way I'm going. And I knew that something, something good and powerful would come out of it. The way that you guys put the guitar parts together and the bass line. I love the bass line. I was the bass player. How did you kind of come up with that? Did, I didn't come up with the guitar lines. That's that's Corbett, and that's both Corbett and Banana, and they're two styles of finger picking. Jerry's playing that lick on 12 string, and yeah, he came up with that. And the two guitars, Banana and Jerry never got along that great, but on that day, it was beautiful. You know, it's funny, I met Dino years later in San Francisco. I met him at the motorcycle shop. Mm. I've been a lifetime motorcyclist uh, since I was 18. And he was kind of a tough guy. I think I heard stories about the uh, Quicksilver Messenger Quicksilver, Service, yeah. that they would kind of get drunk and punch each other. And yeah, I thought, how, how, where did this song, this angelic um, poetry come out of Dino? I make the angels cry. When you recorded it, it wasn't about being a hit. It was five minutes long. I mean, you couldn't have a record over four minutes. They just wouldn't play it. I mean, mm -hmm. Bill Medley of the Righteous Brothers told me about that. It became like a four minute, 15 second song, which yeah. was way wrong for 1964. Unheard of. Unheard of. Sure. They had to be uh, two minutes and 30 seconds or, <laughs> right. or you just couldn't get it played. In 66, it went to number 62. It wasn't a hit. And then it came back two years later because this was a song that had to be noticed. Oh, make the angels cry. I mean, in 67, it was a smash in San Francisco, but that was, that was, a, and maybe in Seattle, but that was it. The rest of the country was not ready for it. But you know, it never would have come out again if it wasn't for the head of promotion at RCA. His name was Augie Bloom. In 69, he sensed that the country had uh, was turning against the war, 
and that it might be a time for get together. And he went uh, to the president and said, I want to I want to re-release this. And the president said, we don't do that at RCA. It's, it's had its. And he said, uh, well, you're going to do it or I'm going to leave the company. Wow. And so Augie put his and nobody would let Augie Bloom go uh, unless they're out of their mind, especially the people who were running RCA who had no idea what what to do with pop music, really. Yeah. So, yeah, he put his job on the line, and he was right. It was the time. I want to go through a few of the verses really quick and just mm -hmm. ask you a few things. So, first verse, love is but a song to sing. Fear is the way we die. Love is but a song to sing. I love it because it comes back at the end, love and fear. And that's where we're living right now. I said at the beginning mm -hmm. of this, we need this song more than ever. You hold the key to love and fear. I was telling a story about when Bruce Springsteen hadn't recorded an album with the E Street Band in mm -hmm. years. And when September 11th happened, somebody called out to him and said, he was walking along the street and they said, Bruce, we need you now. And mm -hmm. so that kind of inspired him to write The Rising, which was, mm -hmm at that moment, an album that the, the country needed to heal. And that's what I feel like saying to you right now is, Jesse, we need your song, we need you, we need this song right now on this divisive time. I think that's what I'm doing. I mean, um, people say, oh, how do you like the road? Because <laughs> I hadn't played for maybe 10 years. 10 years ago, I think I quit the road and I thought I was done. Of course, I discovered I had Lyme disease, a pretty bad, and had had it probably for a couple of decades. So then uh, uh, I finally found treatment and started to get better. And in 2016, my son was coming out of Berkeley College of Music, and he was graduating. So I went, uh, Connie and I, my wife, went to see his senior recital. And uh, he put together a band. Jen, you met him. It was a keyboard player yeah. in that band. Just mm -hmm. to play some fusion for his recital. And I sat there and listened to those young people. And I said, damn, how can they be <laughs> that good? They're so young. And they have such power, the power of youth. And I guess I thought, I want to, you know, I want to hear them play my music. Yeah. I want them to play with me. And we may not know why. Well, second verse, some may come mm. and some may go, we shall surely pass. When the one that left us here returns for us at last. Returns for us at last. We are but a moment's sunlight fading in the grass. Light fading in the grass. It's like dust in the wind. The guitar solo is before the third verse. I just love that dueling guitar solo. There was magic. Mm -hmm. They were both from the Cambridge folk scene, which was the strongest folk scene on the East Coast at the time. New York, we had three or four clubs, but, you know, Cambridge had 20. So they, you know, they were both in that scene for a while, and that really came out in Get Together, I think, more than in any other thing, other songs we recorded, that picking thing. And you may not know why. I've always wanted to ask you about, if you hear the song I sing, you will understand. And you say, listen, I love that. You will understand. Listen. It just happened. Yeah. Totally spontaneous. Oh, yeah. Wow. But I, I always say it um, when I sing it now. It's become part of the song. Understand. It ends with you hold the keys to love and fear. All in your trembling hand. Just one key unlocks them both. I mean, this is a this is a you know a very kind of Buddhist offering of of spirituality to a lot of us. That was the offering of power. Mm -hmm. Like you have you have some individual 
power to make this choice. Don't let somebody make you make it for you. And uh, that became almost the spiritual thrust of that whole generation. It's there at your command. My favorite part is to hear the people sing. Oh, yeah. And a couple of three months ago, we did this Greenwich Village thing in Central Park. And about 6,000 people, it was free. And they do that all summer in uh, Central Park. So I came out and sang it together at the end uh, after darkness and sunlight. And uh, I've never heard an audience sing it like that. It was so strong. And I saw people using their fists. And I thought, what the hell? It was the um, anniversary of Charlottesville. And people were saying, no, we choose this. It was beautiful. Yes, you. Well, the covers of it after your version, Joni Mitchell, when she sang with Crosby, Stills and Nash. Carpenters. Dave Clark Five hit number eight. It was her last <laughs> hit. <laughs> and uh, since then, Indigo Girls, Andy Williams. Beautiful. Was, Indigo yeah. Girls. Beautiful. Yeah. Just one key unlocks them both. And then, of course, Big Mountain hit the charts with it in 95. And Is that the reggae version? Yeah, yeah. That's a cool version. Yeah. I was living in Hawaii at that time. Right now, right now. If your song made it on this soundtrack, <laughs> <laughs> that was big because Forrest Gump was that, that perfect movie for the baby boom generation of the music that happened. And for my generation, mm -hmm. Gen X, I mean... That's how a lot of my friends heard these songs from the 60s and the, and the early 70s. Expand her mind and learn how to live in harmony. What did you think when you saw that? I loved it. Um, I loved the movie. Oh, and yeah. then I started getting these. Uh, it was wonderful. We're living in Hawaii. I hadn't been playing much. And um, I start getting these letters from 10-year-olds saying, that's our class song. <laughs> and I thought, wow, this is... A, Forrest Gump has given to another, to a whole new generation, this beautiful, this beautiful inspirational song, and kids get it. She made it all the way to California. Hey, when you played it at No Nukes, that was such an incredible performance. Jackson Brown, Bonnie Raitt, Stephen Stills. Was oh there. yeah, Stephen Stills. I was. One of the founders of No Nukes, the music, and uh, there was a quarter of a million people in the park. Biggest anti-nuclear demonstration in the world, I think. From that time forward, there wasn't a nuke built in this country, and that was, a, that was important to me. What a thrill to have music uh, be a pivot point for that, a huge amount of people coming together and feeling the same way, like, I don't want this for my kids. No, this is wrong. Let's, let's, you know, let's stop. The most beautiful part of moving to San Francisco was being able to play for free in the parks. I mean, you could pull a permit for a hundred bucks. And uh, we had a PA and then somebody would bring a 40 foot flatbed or we would just set up in the panhandle and play for free. And the people were, were part of the music. There was not this, okay, we're on stage and you guys are paying us money to do this. It was like, this is a gift given to us. We share it with you and then you share all this energy. We really, we're together. 
our hearts are in the same place. The performers, the audience, the sound guys, that was the most amazing part of the 60s for me. I mean, we have uh, pretty much been pulling apart from that ever since. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about Jesse Colin Young and the Youngbloods and this life-changing song of peace. What are your memories and what are your experiences with it? Uh, what other bottle lightning songs should we cover on here? Let us know in the comments. And make sure to subscribe to join our great music community here where we talk about the stories behind the songs and we share memories every day. To get more content, you can click on our Patreon link to support our channel. Help us keep the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.